Welcome to Read Your Comics. Today I'm looking at Dark Dominion number one. All right, as usual, I want to give a quick shout out to all of my subscribers. Channel is continuing to grow. Appreciate all the interest I'm getting. If you are digging this material, please leave comments. You know, if you like the book or have questions about the book or you want to just say you hate the book or you hate my voice, whatever. Um, I'm trying to build a little community going here with Read Your Comics and um, I appreciate any feedback you give. So this one's another one of my 1993 books. This one, however, was not in the top 300. I wanted to cover it. For one thing, I liked it. I like this series. I thought it was an interesting one, but also because of the Defiant logo. Um, Defiant was a company created by Jim Shooter after he was ousted at Valiant. Now, I think of Valiant's heyday as the time with Shooter. It was a very tightly well-constructed universe. Um, you know, it was con it was there was good continuity between books, although you didn't feel like you had to read each book to understand what was going on. So it wasn't like you had to read all the titles, but if you did read all or, you know, a few of the books, there would be like little nuggets that would just let you know, hey, this is in the real world and it's happening kind of at the same time, which was also one of the traits of the Jim Shooter era at Marvel that I look back on very fondly of. Anyway, so I wanted to look at this title. It's called Dark Dominion. This is number one. This is not actually the first issue or the first appearance. The first issue, just like Warriors of Plasm, this started out with a card set that when you put the cards together, they would make comic book pages. And here is why this was the worst idea ever. I don't have this card. kind of neat but i never got this card and in order to get that card i had to buy more and more and more packs um in fact i think i bought a box because i have a box i have the box see i have a box so i'm pretty sure i bought a box of cards and i didn't get a complete set out of the box go figure so this was actually done by Steve Ditko. The whole series was conceived. It's credited to Jim Shooter and Steve Ditko did it. Not to mention that, but on every card, you've got the logo, which also like hurts the art in the book. Um, you know, so there's like some neatness to it. Those are kind of neat panels of him looking around the, the main character. And there was like a a binder you would get that had like the comic cover to it. I mean, I'll even put those back in the right order. Did I? Yeah. Probably like this. Anyway, you know, kind of neat, but like, how am I supposed to read this? <laughs> so, and I, I have seen the whole book put together i don't even know why i still have these cards it's something that just floats around like in my collection to the side and i keep moving it out of the way and moving it out of the way but anyway i do have the first four issues of this book and it's it's a solid book now this one is not drawn by steve ditko unfortunately but it does have pretty good art in it uh, so it says developed by jim shooter and steve ditko it's written by lynn ween and penciled by Joseph A. James, inked by Mike Barrario, Bob Downs, and Charles Yokesum, painted by Tim Perkins. So I think the painting aspect of it is nice. It's definitely like a watercolor, like a wash. And I think that kind of makes it stand out. This is a neat concept. So the main character is he's meeting somebody here who's reached out to him and they're talking about He's like, can you help me? There's some vagaries there. And he's like, I might or I might not be able to. There's certain things I can help you with and <clears throat> certain things I can't. And in their discussion, this like deranged person comes into the McDonald's wielding a knife. Um, 
I'm just acting crazy. The manager comes over and tries to like calm him down and he gets his hand sliced. And all of a sudden, this character decides, like, I can take care of this. And he disappears. And it's a cool transition right here. So he actually goes to this, like, uh, not like a di different dimension, but like a different, like, plane. Almost like the astral plane. So you can see where this, like, Ditko-inspired stuff comes from in this. And in this astral plane, there's, like, these monsters that, like hang on every person and feed on them and they feed on like fear and anger and like basically all the negative emotions you can see him there when he's like lit up bright fighting this monster on the cover so then he has like a pretty calm talk because he's like you can still see me and they're able to talk and he's able to like get this monster off of the guy and it calms the dude down and in there he sees this woman who looks like one of the Warriors of Plasm women. If you've read Warriors, Warriors of Plasm, or if you were reading it at the time, because if you were probably getting this book, you were probably getting the other Defiant books too. Um, she looks like she's from that, but she's not. So that when I reread this, that was confusing me. I was like, oh, I don't remember Warriors of Plasm really crossing over with this. Anyway, so he gets the demon thing off of him, and then he reappears. So when he goes to that, like, astral plane normal people can't see him and you know and then he just kind of reappears and i guess like it must be like beyond your senses it's just like he's not there and then he is there so he's like you're gonna calm down and go quietly now and he's like yeah i am you know he says thanks man and then you know he's back to this guy and he's like so you see he's like some things you just kind of have to take care of yourself. Like if you don't give the fear, give into the fear and stuff, these things, they can't hurt you. And then he fades off again. And as you can see, he's walking away. Just everything's covered in these, these monsters. So pretty cool, pretty cool splash pages and stuff. I really think the colors help the transitioning between the astral plane and the um, real world. And I guess he can like walk through walls and stuff. And so he goes to visit this homeless lady who, you know, kind of a trope to go visit the old, the old homeless lady who knows more than she, than you would think. She sees things that we don't see. Um, you know, you see that with like Mad Hetty and Sandman and, and really a lot of books there, uh, like Spawn had like the homeless people that could see stuff beyond the regular realm of things. It's, it's, it's a bit of a tired trope, honestly. It was, at least back then, it was it seemed like it was being used in a lot of books. Um, anyway, so he goes to see her, and he mentions seeing the, uh, the woman, the woman that I said was like the Warriors of Plasm woman. And if she knows anything about it, she's like, well, I don't, but I know somebody that can. You better follow me before I change my mind. And we're going to stop here at this old dumpster and he's like is there a secret entrance or something there behind it she's like nope it's where i keep my valuables my cans and bottles and stuff and i mean he's just kind of like okay i'll carry it for you let's go and then they go down into the subway and when they get down there they immediately find another monster that he has to fight and pretty much she can see it but i don't think she goes to the other realm and they call him Glimmer because I think he's where he's this yellow and most people are this like pink color in it. And they talk about probably the character they met in the card series, who's kind of like the main villain of it, who is more or less trying to control the uh, monster world for his own devices. She dropped her cans. He helps her pick them up. Um, Jim Shooter kind of discusses here the concept of this book, which is good because if you didn't read this card series that may have cost you over $100 to complete and read, you might be like, what exactly is going on here? So he pretty much describes it in this little uh, editor-in-chief scenario here. Pretty cool stuff. I really do like the art in this. It's, it's kind of like Valiant in a way, but a little bit more, uh, intriguing. I don't know. I don't know what the word I'm looking for is here. 
But I do like the art. I do like the coloring in it. It's different. It was different than what most books were doing at the time. And I think that's what made it stand out. And then you had solid storytelling on top of like pretty quality art. So they go visit this other guy who's like down deep in the bowels of, you know, abandoned subway stuff to ask him about the, about the, the woman. And he says he doesn't really know much about it either. Oh, and, and to get his information, she has to basically give up her cans and bottles and stuff. And he must like, like vintage ones or something. <laughs> so, you know, he, he says he doesn't really know too much about it either, but then all of a sudden the woman is there. And he's like, there she is. Can't you see her? I'm like, they can't see her. And as she's like standing there, some of these monsters or demon like things come out and get her. So he switches to his glimmer um, astral plane self and like takes off after her. And he goes and he, you know, he fights off the monsters and gets them off of her. And it's kind of like, okay, now what's going on? You tell me what's going on when he gets whacked in the head in the back. And what he realizes is it was the woman that whacked him in the head. And because she is with the main baddie whose name is Chasm. And so you can see he's got the yellow too. And like where she's yellow and he's yellow, meaning they can, they can go between the two worlds easily. They can like some of those, like the, the homeless lady and the other guy, they can kind of see the other world at times and they know about the other world, but they can't like go back and forth between them. Anyway, and it turns out that the woman he was confused about was also a demon that had some kind of shape-shifting abilities. Lots of monsters and stuff in this. Kind of some more action scenes. It goes pretty fast. It's a pretty quick read. Um, then, while he's in there fighting them, and he's kind of like, you know, you can't really stop me. Like... I can beat these things all day. And he's like, I know you can, but I got your, uh, your people, your lady. And the other guy, I got your lady here, your homeless lady you care a lot about. I've got my real people in the real world taking care of her. Unless you go ahead and change back into your form. And he's kind of an older guy, you know, we don't get like young, uh, you know, 20 something, early 30 something superhero. We got a dude like in his 50s or 60s, really. At least he's white headed, which was an interesting aspect, too, even to me reading it as a kid. So, pretty, pretty interesting. Uh, yeah, they whack him and then they throw him into a pit to um, leave you hanging for the next issue. Here's the card, the premium card set for the Warriors of Plasm book. First printing binders for $150. $150. That is what I think. I mean, other than the fact that this came out in 1993, which was the peak before the crash, stuff like this is the reason it crashed. You know, all the companies doing these kind of gimmicks and Jim Shooter should have known better them to do this and i i feel like i've read where he said he didn't necessarily want to do that it was the you know people backing the company the financers that were like do something like this to prop it up and all it did was piss fans off and give it a slow start i mean i remember plasm kind of being a you know relatively minor hit because people were like they were hopping on Valiant. They're like, oh, I kind of missed out on early Valiant. I'm going to hop on this for sure. It's going to be the next big thing. And this card stuff just sucked them dry. I mean, you're talking about $150, 1993. That might as well have been like $400 <laughs> to buy the first issue in card format. And I don't even know if that's the whole issue in it or just the binder itself. Anyhow. But they did have good, solid stories. That That's the sad part about Defiant, is that they had pretty good storylines. They had pretty good art. They just started off on the wrong foot with these these stupid card sets, even though it's like, yeah, you know, cool-looking Ditko-looking monster there, right? 
Ditkoish Monster. I mean, these these were cool. If you just done a card set of just the characters and stuff, that would be one thing to like kind of be like a companion piece. But when you start out with the first issue, has to be these cards. It's not good. It's not good. <clears throat> Anyhow, um, if you can find these, the first five six issues, it didn't last long because the company folded within eighteen months. Um, but I think Dark Dominion, you know, made it made it close to ten issues. They're worth reading. They really are. If you can find them in the dollar quarter bins or whatever, grab them. Um, they're not reprinted anywhere. They probably won't be. I'm pretty sure the Defiant properties are tied up in legal limbo somewhere. Um, but Dark Dominion was one of one of the good ones. I would say out of the out of the Defiant books that I remember reading. Um, definitely Warriors of, Warriors of Plasm and Dark Dominion were the two best. And they did start out with the card sets. So, there you go. Um, that's all I got for it. Until next time, read your comics. Mm-hmm.